few years ago, I, before starting my master's studies, I was watching TV, and there was in the TV a, an army operation to expel illegal miners from the southern jungle of Peru. This area was, is, an, a natural protected area, and there were helicopters, hundreds of soldiers, and explosions. However, this wasn't the first time. Why hadn't it worked in the previous times? Why were they doing different this time? Sadly, there was nothing new. So after destroying the miners' machinery, the police and army were going to remain in the area for a few weeks. Then after the militia leaves, the miners were going to return as if nothing had ever happened. How could we contribute to this issue if we have no power or deep pockets? La Pampa, the place where this operation took place, is located in Madre de Dios, close to the borders with Bolivia and Brazil. Puerto Maldonado, the closest city, is located 100 kilometers to the east and has a population of 85,000 people. The main activities there are timber and nuts extraction, agriculture, and ecotourism. Oh. The interoceanic road built between 2006 and 2011 boosted the deforestation and the, and the illegal mining in this area. This road is used to smuggle illegal gold through Bolivia and Brazil where there is laundered. Also, corruption is part of the equation. As a glimpse into this matter, back in 2013, there was a scandal that involved customs, few police officers, a couple of judges, and 300, gold, 300 kilograms of gold valued in 30 million euros. What does it mean to have alluvial gold mining? This procedure is, alluvial mining is the extraction of gold from sedimentary soil strata. Usually this procedure begins with deforestation unless the activity takes place in the river. Later, the miners using dredges or excavators and trucks screen the soil. The separation between coarse aggregates and salt uh, uh, and, and salt and clay leads to the degradation of physical and chemical properties of the soil. Later, they use mercury to amalgamate the gold. And finally, they use heat to boil the gold and the gold is ready for, for selling or exchange. This, this procedure is carried out without any safety precaution, with mercury contamination of people being the most significant hazard. The absorption of mercury through the skins takes place at the amalgamation. Then mercury is inhaled when the pearl is boiled. And finally, mercury, mercury is ingested at the time of exposure to food contaminated with mercury. The miners live in unsanitary conditions, in camps made of wood and plastic. There isn't any water infrastructure or health facilities. It's also known that there is child trafficking because the police found brothels with miners in there. At this point, I was involved in the, into this matter. I felt annoyed and hurt, but also motivated to try to make a change into the scenario described. I found plenty of information about the causes and consequences, but I didn't find any information about any solution proposal or plan. So maybe it was in that niche, in that niche where I could make a contribution. What did the government miss in its attempt to eradicate, to eradicate illegal mining in Tambapata? I think it was sustainability. The only use of force is not enough. It's never going to be the only answer. The solutions 
besides force, which is, go which is going to help us to restore the rule of law, needs the participation of the affected communities, development of infrastructure activities, and the restoration of the ecosystem. In the search for a technical support to develop a business that, that could help us to remediate the environment and also contribute to the economy, I found a paper at the, from the Ecological Engineering Journal called Reforestation with four tree species after abandoned gold mining in the Peruvian Amazon. In this paper, the authors use compost and fertilizer to improve survivorship and growth of the, seed of the plants. This was actually great news. It was technically feasible to restore the area, to reforest it. However, the next challenge was to prove that it was economically viable. And I took this challenge as my thesis subject. If we are going to develop a business plan, we need to begin with the right questions. So what do we need to grow any plant? We need sun, we need clear water, appropriate soil that we don't have it, but we can make it, and, seedl and seedlings that we are going to buy. How do we improve our soil? We are going to improve it using compost, and we can get it from organic matter. Around the deforested area, it's possible to get it from urban organic waste and also from the waste of nuts extraction. Therefore, the people of Puerto Maldonado need to be educated and motivated to segregate their waste. And also the local businesses, like restaurants and hotels, needs to support in this matter. In the case of nut extraction, they are currently left the waste in the jungle or use it as fuel. However, they need, we, we need this, this organic matter. Therefore, there should be considered economic incentive for them to bring this to the compost facility. We need also an appropriate landscape to develop these businesses. So we will need roads for access to patrol the site and also move our the, the, the trees and seedlings. Also, besides the roads, the current landscape requires earthwork to make the agricultural forest activities possible. When I was writing my thesis, because of time and resources constraint, I assumed that the volume required to get a suitable surface was equal to 1.2 meters depth in the whole area. Well, now we have the soil, the appropriate surface. And the next question was, what are we going to plant? Because of mercury contamination, the plant species that produce edible products were discarded. However, timber species were a viable option, especially when we consider that the timber industry is labor demanding. However, despite that, I had no idea how to choose a timber species. My background is civil engineering. However, I had the opportunity to talk with a forest engineer and he told me and he advised me to use the species Eucalyptus urograndis. This species is, is very resilient and also have a rapid growth. Also, he advised to plant 1,000 seedlings per hectare and use one cubic foot of compost per seedling. The plantation of, those, of these three species considers cuts every four years and a final cut in the year four. In the year 20. The revenues and OPEX ex estimation were very difficult. Also the calculation, also the process of the tree as an asset in the balance sheet. However, at the end of it, I proved that the project to reforest the, this area was economically viable. The model shows that with a 700 million euros, the project could provide a 12% return without considering any, any financial costs or subsidies, which are quite usual in this kind of business. All in all, 
this project was able to capture 42 million tons of CO2 in the 50 years lifespan. This is equivalent to the emissions of half a million Peruvians in the same five, 50 years period. 50 years period. The social benefits of this proposal are pretty obvious. No mercury poisoning and hundreds of decent jobs. However, the people directly involved in mining sees this, this activity as their only source of income. Besides, all the, comp all the social components that we can imagine of develop and fund, like skills development, relocation program, or communities a community development program. Nar the narrative built around this, around this proposal is going to be crucial. Regarding this matter, experience taught me later that politics and power are two cards that are going to set the success or failure of any change in Tambopata. Despite the usual sense of achievement that one always feels for one thesis work. I, will, I knew that this project wasn't going to be done by one rookie engineer. And because of this, I like to see my work as a drop in a glass. It won't make much of a change today, but it will help a bit for those working in this subject later. Sharing and discussing problems can help to create broader understanding. So at this point, at some point, someone will contribute with a drop that will make the class overflow. Thank you.